Warriors, welcome to another important video, my friends. If this channel is helping you, please subscribe and hit the bell for all the notifications for my upcoming videos. And if you get the chance, comment below and let's engage in a conversation. I'd love to hear what you have to say around today's topic. Today, I want to tackle CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, for anxiety. But let's go beyond anxiety, right? CBT can be used for pretty much anything as you're going through the day. To give you some perspective, I want to share some of my experiences with CBT. C, first of all, is the cognitive side of things, where we shift the way we think about things and how we perceive things. Behavioral is the action, the motivation and the action. Sometimes the behavior is to stop doing something. Other times it's to begin doing something. So when you combine CBT, we're focusing on shifts in the mind and shifts at a behavioral level. And with CBT, I found that it was very, very effective in keeping me aware as I was going through the day. And when I mean aware, Many times when we experience anxiety, it tends to arise because of things that we're doing that we're unaware of. So CBT gave me the opportunity to become aware of things I wasn't aware of, and it helped me to realize that, hey, you know, I didn't have to live my life the way I was living my life. I didn't have to perceive my past or my future or the present in the way my unconscious wanted me to perceive it, right? So unbelievable how many options can arise as you practice CBT, right? But before we go into these very important steps that you can utilize in the moment of deep sensitivity and anxiety arising, I want to focus on what you need to have, what you need to bring to the table to make CBT work for you. The first thing you need to bring to the table is to understand that you need brief moments of courage as you go through the day. When we suffer from anxiety, it seems like we have to be so courageous all day long and we have to step out of our comfort zones all day and the moment we feel like we are not satisfied with what we have done we beat ourselves up and we go back to our comfortable discomfort zones but i'm here to tell you that all you need is brief moments of courage as you go through the day a situation arises okay well instead of me looking to avoid, because that's what anxiety sufferers do, avoid a situation, avoid a circumstance, avoid a symptom. You need brief moments of courage to be able to look at that situation differently and to take some type of different action, something that you normally wouldn't do in that situation, right? So as you're going through the day, you need brief moments of courage so prepare your mindset and intention so that you can utilize this approach. Right? Second thing you need is we need to bring attention to your infinite capabilities, right? Because what does anxiety do? Anxiety brings us to a place where we feel like we are very limited in what we can achieve, right? I can't go to that get together. I can't look at my sensations differently. I can't heal my inner child. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, right? But the truth is, is that we have to get back in touch with I can. I'm not here to motivate you. I'm here to bring to your awareness what you're unaware of so that we can create some change. So I want you to focus on the idea that you are an infinite being living among infinite potentials. And when you tap into this, you begin to open yourself up to more options 
and CBT begins to work for you, right? This is kind of the prerequisites to implementing CBT. So again, infinite capabilities, you. The third thing is we have to begin to understand that the drive to upgrade our belief systems is essential. The drive. There has to be a certain amount of relentlessness towards shifting what you believe. Not what you consciously believe, but what you believe at a subconscious level, right? The teachings early on. And so we get to a place where we look at these belief systems, these walls, these doubts that are holding us back from moving forward, and we go, hey, it's time for an upgrade right? You look at your phone. Your phone upgrades its apps. It upgrades its systems. Everything around you is being upgraded all the time, right? And with those changes, you must embrace the changes that you need to make at a core belief level. So I want you to bring some drive, some relentlessness drive towards upgrading your belief systems. And now that we understand what we need to bring to the table to make CBT for anxiety work for us, I want you to write down and understand these steps, okay? Because you can use these steps from one step to the next in moments of sensitivity, or you can utilize one of them. They will both work, right? But no matter what, Let's begin utilizing CBT to respond to fear better in the moment, okay? Step one is recognition. Recognition. The awareness over a feeling that you don't want to feel, right? And you're going, yeah, Dennis, I am truly aware of all the things I don't want to feel. Well, the truth is, is that when you're aware, you're not really consciously aware, you're unconsciously aware of that feeling, right? And instead of being unconsciously aware and therefore doing the same thing you've done all the time to avoid something, I want you to be consciously recognizing the feeling, right? There's a big difference there. One allows us to look deeper and the other promotes this feeling of, hey, I'm stuck again, I don't want this, I want it to go away, right? It's very instinctual. We don't want to be instinctual. We want to allow our adult conscious mind to take over in that moment. That's what C in CBT is. So step one is the recognition. I am feeling something that I don't want to feel. And just that simple recognition and pause allows you to look deeper within, allows you to understand the feeling better rather than be instinctual. Step two after recognition is backtracking. I call it backtracking because at this point we are conscious and we are recognizing what action whether through thought, behavioral, or verbal expression, led to the feeling. What led to this feeling? Many times when we feel anxiety, we're going, oh, that just happened, right? I just feel anxious, right? It's because of that thing that happened on the outside. It's because of that. But many times we need to understand that anxiety is a result of what's happening inside of you, right? Because nothing on the outside should be able to cause you anxiety when you get to a place when you can perceive those things differently, right? And so we understand that in step two, when we backtrack, we begin to look at the cookie crumbs that led to this feeling of discomfort, this feeling I don't want to feel. Maybe it was the night before and you began to focus on all the things that could go wrong in the morning. Maybe it's become so habitual, right, that you need to bring some extra awareness to the things that have become habit. 
So we begin to backtrack and go, ah, you know, I really was perceiving this exact situation this way. Or maybe I've been holding on to that thing that happened to me 18 and a half years ago, and maybe it's time for me to resolve it. Maybe it's time for me to reframe it in some way so that I can respond with CBT better in the moment. Step two is backtracking. Step three is working with new possibility. Working with new possibility. What this means is the recognition of a new perception over the very thing that is causing the buildup of bodily stress. These stress hormones don't fire if they don't believe there's a reason to fire them, right? The body will not mobilize itself to go fight a threat or to run from something if it perceives that this or a future moment is in fact safe. Right? Only makes sense. So what we need to do in step three, after we recognize, after we backtrack, is to work with new possibility, right? Well, maybe this symptom is in fact uncomfortable and not life-threatening. Hmm, why don't I build on this possibility instead? Maybe Janet, who I'm gonna meet in a couple hours, isn't going to be so judgmental over me, right? Maybe she's focused on her own life and her own situations. That's a possibility. So what we want to do here is we want to open ourselves up to new possibilities, right? Because the possibility that you are coming in contact with is again, very instinctual. And what tends to happen that I've noticed is that many times it's the fourth or the fifth or the sixth possibility after we recognize and backtrack that is in fact true. It's not the first or the second or the third, right? Because these possibilities are based around survival. And we have to look beyond the survival mind if in fact CBT is gonna work for us. Step four, after working with a new possibility is acting on the new. Here we go with the behavioral side of things, come on, right? So what this means, acting on the new, is strengthening the new perception through an action that begins shifting the feeling from being heightened to neutral. What can I do in this moment that will allow my system to understand that this present or future threat isn't a threat. What can I do to neutralize this moment? It may feel very uncomfortable to do something different, to behave in a different way, to either speak up rather than suppress your thoughts and your words, right? That would be a different kind of action. And your system will go, oh, Goodness, dude, don't express yourself. Don't do that thing that's different. We're not used to it. We're not sure that this is safe to do. And you will get that feeling. You will get that heightened level of sensitivity. But what tends to happen is with every behavioral tick, every acting on the new, what tends to happen is the system, the subconscious is going, well, it seems to be safe right? It seems to be working. He's safe and he's happy. Those are our two priorities. So, okay, we'll, we'll tend to build this new habit up, but if something arises in the future, we will let him know through a feeling. So, again, don't be afraid of stepping out of this comfort zone and acting in a way that allows the subconscious to understand that this moment is safe. It is neutral. It is not a threat. That would be step four, acting on the new. And step five, the final step is identifying with, and this is so, so, so crucial, my friends. 
identifying with means seeing how the new perception and action is actually our true selves. So Dennis, what you're saying is CBT isn't just something that I want to do right now to overcome anxiety. Yes, that is correct. CBT is utilized to shift your identity, who you are, and what you believe you deserve in this world. And so I want you to not see CBT as just a method to overcome anxiety. I want you to utilize CBT as a lifelong process, a lifelong never-ending method that you can use every single day, not only for anxiety, but anything, right? I want you to identify with these changes that you're making, identify with them. Tell yourself, this is truly who I am. It may be unfamiliar to me to be this way, but the truth is that if change is going to happen, I have to get myself comfortable with the unfamiliar. Because until I get myself comfortable with the unfamiliar, I can't embrace uncertainty. And if I can't embrace uncertainty, I will always look for the certainty in everything, therefore live my life without any change and live my life within anxiety. This isn't fair to you and this isn't fair to the world because what CBT has helped me to do is it has helped me to move myself from the next thing to the next thing to the next thing and eventually bring me towards my purpose. My purpose is to give back. My purpose is to give back to you. My purpose is to show you what you are capable of and to lessen the amount of suffering that is taking place in this world right now. So my friends, make sure that you understand the prerequisites that we talked about prior to starting CBT. I will add all of these in the description below and then utilize these five steps, these five CBT for anxiety steps every single day till you truly identify with these changes. Did I mention that I love you all from the bottom of my heart because I truly do? Give this video a like and comment below on your greatest insight. I want to hear from you. As well, if you have any questions on the number one most powerful anxiety recovery program available online today, head over to this website right here. Remember that you are more than anxiety. Don't ever forget it and live it out through CBT starting today. Bye, my friends.